Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm glad to be here in Oxford University with a mostly student of the university, which they are young people. So I feel young when I am among you, so I'm glad to be here. Uh, well, my name is Saleh Muslim, Saleh Muslim Mohammed. I am co-president of PYD, which is uh, a party, mainly the Kurdish party, uh, in the place we call it Rojava, which is a part of Syria. Uh, when we say Rojava, uh, we are talking about Rojava of Kurdistan, which is the western of Kurdistan. Maybe most of you, especially the, the students who have a lo knowledge of the history they know. Uh, Kurdistan as a part of the Mesopotamia was divided uh, between four countries which they were uh, one nation countries. One of them is Syria, the other is Turkey and the other is Iraq and the other is Iran. Four countries. So according this uh, division we call the Rojava, which is a part of Kurdistan included in Syria, we call it Rojava Kurdistan. And the south is belong to Iraq, and north belong to Turkey. And the eastern Kurdistan is a part of Iran now. Uh, the Kurdish people suffered from this situation maybe since the beginning of the 20th century till now. Uh, but for the recent years, what happened, especially uh, during the Syrian revolution, which uh, the people were aiming uh, for democracy and freedom. Uh, there was a hard fighting. And now maybe if uh, you have followers following the situations, uh, we have uh, uh, about uh, maybe more than 300 people were killed, victims of this, uh, uh, this war. And uh, we have more than one million injured people. Uh, we have uh, maybe around uh, seven or eight million people, were, they were displayed, displaced or immigrated from Syria. Uh, it's all a res result of what happened in Syria, is an internal war. Uh, still, the regime of Syria, which was Ba'ath Party, mainly the uh, Arabic Nationalist Party, is still in the power, uh, is sitting in Damascus. And we have also the war going on mainly by uh, uh, the opposition, which uh, they were extremists. Maybe most of you, you have heard about ISIS or Daesh, uh, uh, which is a tool used by many powers, uh, especially internationally or local powers, by Turkey and Saudi Arabia, Qataris, and financed by them also. Uh, there's still the fighting g going on, but now the reality, uh, we have in Syria, which is a small country, we have uh, uh, the soldiers and the, maybe the navy and the army of Russians and United States, United Kingdom, France and everybody is there. Um, they are fighting how to um, maybe for the influence in future uh, Middle East. So this, this is the re real conflict I mean going on in Syria. But as a Kurdish people, uh, we were struggling against the regime since 2004 as a party, PYD, my party. And of course, there were some other parties, also the Kurdish parties. We were against the regime, and we started our struggle against the regime even uh, before that. But mainly, the main struggle was started in 2004, in the date called uh, Serhildan Kamishlo. It was in the March 2004. Till now, we're still fighting. And the revolution, I mean, the, the Syrian revolution was opportunity for us to organize our people. We could, go, we could organize our people and our society. Uh, and uh, also, I mean, wh what I mean by organization, uh, to organize them from, uh, by all means. I mean, uh, a society defending and maybe law, institutions, whatever is needed, uh, we could do it. And the result for this organizing the people uh, was one of them was uh, uh, establishing the um, YPG, which is People Defense Units, and YPG, which is Women Defense Units. And they were able to defeat Daesh, which is the most brutal organization 
ever seen by the humanity, I mean in the history, uh, it was defeated by those forces mainly uh, in 2015. <coughs> and then everybody uh, knew what they are Kurdish people and what is Rojava. And in Kobani, the Kobani became a famous, it was a small place, uh, place was ignored by everybody. Nobody knew anything about Kobani. And just by this struggle and this victory or against uh, Daesh or ISIS became uh, famous. And we uh, m saw the solidarity of all the people, I mean the human rights defenders and the uh, humanitarian values defenders uh, in all over the world, they were uh, beside Kobani. Until now, the struggle is continuing. Uh, now, uh, we had, uh, of course, I mean local actors also. They were involved in this Syrian conflict, uh, mainly Turkey. She wa uh, Turkey was in the conflict from the beginning. Uh, and uh, it was supporting Daesh and ISIS, whatever it is. And now we have a, a, a total war against Daesh and ISIS in two places mainly. One is Mosul in Iraq and the other one in Raqqa, which is capital of Daesh. Uh, and Turkey is trying to support them uh, in many ways. And because of these uh, defeats happened to against Daesh and so, uh, especially in the place called Shahba, which is north of Syria, uh, the Turkey was enforced even to be involved itself directly. So uh, Turkey is occupying a part of uh, the Syrian land now and still the fighting going on. And they are trying to keep the Kurds away from fighting Daesh because Daesh mainly was uh, defeated on the hands of the Kurds. So this is the short story. But for Rojava, I would like to see, I mean, just to know what we are talking about. Uh, Rojava is north of Syria, uh, mainly are Kurdish people. Uh, we are talking about 30 to 35,000 uh, square kilometers. It's a large uh, place. Uh, just for comparison, I mean, to understand what it is, is the three times of uh, Lebanon. So it's a country just like that. And uh, the population of Rojava, we are talking about 15% in of Syrian population, which there are about uh, three or three and a half million people. And uh, we have diversities <laughs> over there. Uh, mainly they are Kurdish people. And also we have Syriacs, anciently they are living in the same place. And we have Turkmens, we have Arabs, we have Armenians, uh, which they were uh, rescued from the uh, genocide massacres against the Armenian in 1915 by the Turkish uh, government or Turkish uh, uh, forces. So all we were living together. And now uh, we have established a system uh, very democratic. I mean, representing all these components living together with a, a contract, we call it social contract, between all representatives of all these components. Uh, so we are defending our area from one side and trying to build our a new system, which is we believe is convenient for all the components in Rojava and in Syria, and it could be a solution for the Middle East also, <coughs> uh, which is a democratic self-administration. And uh, we have project for all Syria, it's called uh, uh, democratic federalism for Syria. So this is the way we are uh, working and just this short information I, I can give you. And if there is any questions, we are ready to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. I'd like to pick up on the points of diversity and democracy that you spoke about. And because since 2012, when the power share agreement was made between the Kurdish National Council and your party, there have been many arrests of, of officials of KNC. Um, it looks as if your party have established some kind of monopoly that stifles opposition. Do you think that's a fair criticism? Yeah, should I answer? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, uh, no, it's not right <laughs> criticism, actually, uh, because um, we are not monopoly of one party or so. Uh, our party, since uh, 2007, has decided, I mean, as a mentality, as a project for future. We have, uh, it was uh, 
a decision by our third Congress in 2007, we decided that a self-democratic um, maybe uh, administration in, for Rojava, which is not only one party, but for the all components, all the parties want to share it. And we, uh, in 2011, when the Syrian revolution started, we started to implement what we were thinking for. And usually we call everybody, I mean, to share in it. So this institution, now uh, we are talking about the institutions in Rojava, we are talking about Asayish, which is police forces, we are talking about the courts, uh, I mean, uh, judicial system, and uh, even the defense units, which is for all, and uh, all the components are sharing, and all the parties we are reading, and also, uh, uh, I mean, we have, as I mentioned, I mean, we have a social contract. According to uh, social contract, everybody is free. I mean, uh, from the political wise and from the gender wise, the equality between the genders also is guaranteed in this social contract. And the so according to that, we have a law for the parties. Any party can apply and get uh, a permission to establish uh, a political party. So this is the way. and. Uh, of course, I mean, in England also you have a, a law for the party. Any party should get the permission, I mean, to establish a party, to know what they are aiming for is a kind of organization. So you think members of the Kurdish National Council feel they're part of a pluralistic yeah, just, democracy? Uh, yeah, let me say, uh, continue, I mean, because our Kurdish stories mostly are long stories. <laughs> well, we... we uh, after this law, about 15 parties they applied uh, to be official parties in Rojava, and they are working. For National Council Party, they were, uh, we were um, among the, the parties who established this uh, Syrian National Council. But what happened, I mean, we didn't, for this system, when we, uh, this system started to be established, the National uh, Council Party, they didn't accept some of them. And it's under the influence of Democratic, uh, yeah, um, Kurdistan Democratic Party, which is in uh, Masoud Barzani's influence. They were under their control. So they, re they rejected the system because of their relations with the Turkey, because they don't want this system. <coughs> and all the parties they have left, and now only two parties called the uh, National, I mean, uh, Kurdish National C Council, two parties only. One is uh, Kurdistan Democratic Party S, which means Syria, uh, belong to KDP in Iraq, this is one, and the other party is YKT. And those two parties, they are located in Istanbul mainly. And they are rejecting this democratic system, otherwise uh, the open to come. So it's not monopoly, uh, because as a PYD, as a party, we don't have any member of our party in any position of the, this system actually. Uh, there are some other parties, about 15 parties, but those institutions and so, uh, they are not, uh, they don't belong to any party because everybody, I mean the society is sharing in it. You so this is the way. Sure, so you mentioned Istanbul then, Istanbul having an influence on the, the Kurdish uh, National parties. Council. Two parties. Sure. Yeah, on two parties. On two yes. parties. Um, so I'd like to talk about Turkey briefly in the context of ISIS, because you mentioned ISIS were a tool used by Turkey yes. and to suppress Kurds. That's but right, yes. The thing I find interesting is that just a few days ago, we had a, a general from the US military telling us that Turkey were part of the coalition fighting against ISIS. So how can Turkey simultaneously support ISIS but also be fighting them? Well, this is the Ottoman uh, game. I mean, it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a difficult to understand, really. Uh, well, if you are ready to listen, I am ready to explain to you. Well, in Turkey, you have intelligence services, many of them, but mainly they have two intelligence services. One of them is MIT and MNIAT, and so, which is legal uh, organizations for security, and everybody knows them. They are supporting those, uh, some groups, which is uh, Salafist, but not Daesh. And Daesh is supported by uh, an establishment, which is intelligence services, uh, tied to gendarme is called GITEM, G-I-T-E-M, it's, it's belong to gendarme. Well, if you ask the Turks, they will, well, they will say we have no such organization because it's secret, really. And this is supporting the Daesh. And everybody in Turkey, they know that there is GITEM, uh, which is intelligence services belong to gendarme. Uh, they are supporting, so it's different ways. If you ask them legally, they will say we, we are supporting 
I mean those groups, which is Jabhat al-Nusra, Ahrar al-Sham, the mentality of them is the same as Daesh, and Ahrar al-Sham, Jabhat al-Nusra, and the others, uh, Zinki, and the other groups. But if you ask them Daesh, they say, well, not fighting them. Anyway, uh, we th see in, in the practice, I mean, from the information we are getting when they invade to Jarablus, the Daesh over there, because some elements of Daesh, they don't belong to them. And some of them, they belong, they were trained in Turkey. So those people from Daesh who trained in Turkey, they just cut their beard and change the clothes and they become um, uh, Sultan Murad units or the other units and they are joining and they are fighting against the people, I mean the local groups now over there. But the rest, uh, I mean, well, for anyhow, those people, I mean those groups which they are fighting in the area, uh, they have no different from Daesh. Zinki, they were chopping the heads. It's the same, I mean, even selling the women or slaving the women, they have the same mentality. Uh, only the name is different. Otherwise, they are the same. Okay. Well, one group that definitely has been fighting ISIS without any sort of ifs or buts is the PKK, and we're obviously very involved with the rescue of the Yazidis and fighting and engaging with ISIS in, in various different regions. Do you think that should change the way the world perceives the PKK? Should we no longer see them as a, a terrorist organization as NATO does? Well, before PKK, I mean, the people were there in Shangal who saved the Yazidis, they were YPG before PKK. I mean, our people, they were there. Uh, they were because it's close to our borders. Uh, YPG and YPG, they uh, rescued, I mean, the Yazidis and so on. Then PKK came after that. So the way of looking to PKK, of course, is not my matter. But my, uh, what we are, uh, I mean, trying to do, don't connect us to P P P PKK. Because if you are looking PKK maybe for the favor of Turkey because Turkey wants it, but we have nothing to do with the PKK, so don't connect us to them and don't blame us or don't say they are terrorists. I mean YPG and PYD, and which is we are all belong to Roger, but we have nothing to do with the PKK. Mm -hmm. For PKK or delisting it from the terrorism uh, terrorist list or not, <coughs> it's something related to uh, Europe, they have to do, but we believe the PKK is not a terrorist organization. This is first. And secondly, uh, they didn't harm anybody. I mean, in, in UK or in Europe or in all over the world, they didn't hurt anybody. But it's just they put them in the terrorists just because of Turkey wanted it. It's because of wish of Turkey, they have put it in the terrorists. Otherwise, they are not terrorists. And uh, maybe the recently, uh, the fighting of uh, um, uh, PKK members in Kirkuk and Shangal, it was big evidence that they are, uh, they are fighting against uh, Daesh and the terrorist organizations. Yeah, and without conflating your party in the PKK, no, we have without doing so, do. I'd be curious to know where you then draw the line between a terrorist organization and freedom fighting movement. That's right. Should how how yeah, do you make that distinction? <coughs> how, how do you do that? Oh, well, I think uh, everything, no, the, um, how the measurements, I mean, because uh, my, uh, in my opinion, if they ask me to, to, to make a difference between the terrorist or not terrorist, anybody attacking the civilian targets for any aim, even if it's political, <coughs> should be terrorist organization. But targeting the military and the others for any state, any government, and so th because you are fighting against the regime, so it should be considered this way. Uh, this organization tar targeting the civilians, it should be um, terrorized and put in the so terrorist list, yes. I think one thing evident from the first question I asked about the PKK is that you are very keen to make a distinction between your party, between the PKK, and by extension between your party and the KNC and your party and the other sort of Kurdish movements. Do you think the disunity between different Kurdish political groups and parties in different regions in the Middle East is really hampering the prospects of sovereignty? Well, I don't think so, because it's usual, I mean, in any country or any part of the world, you have different opinion. They can have a different uh, political opinion or even, uh, a different uh, political approach. Maybe everybody thinks, uh, looks at way different, so this is normal. But the un unnormal thing, I mean, those parties or so, if they have militia to fight against each other. So this is unnormal, especially in the Kurdish case. Well, you can have, I mean, in Syria, 
uh, we can have maybe um, 50 parties or 40 parties. They just discuss it. They persuade each other. Um, so this is the way to work. I mean, for even for criticizing or so, uh, this is the way to advance. Okay. But if the fighting is is uh, is unacceptable, so, so you you put the emphasis on healthy disagreement, other than it being sort of factional unrest. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, talking of factional unrest, we see both Russia and the United States supporting Kurdish forces in Syria. Um, how do you see the relationship between the Kurds in Syria playing out between both Russia and America <laughs> with their various vested interests? Uh, well, uh, I am mainly, I mean, uh, as a person, I am involved in these relations with uh, Russians and Americans and talk to them. Well, shortly, it's just like that. I mean, if we have uh, American Navy and American forces and American army in the Middle East is about 10,000 kilometers away from America. So what they are doing here? They, are, they came for benefit of the, their states, of the, their country. Is it right? Yes. Uh, for the Russia, the same. Uh, thousands of kilometers, three or four thousand kilometers. And they have their Navy, their army and everything in, uh, in the Middle East. Why they are there? They are for the benefit of their people or their states. And the same for Europe, UK. Well, they have their navy and army and everything, and the France and the others. So everybody is looking for their interest. Well, <laughs> those bloody people over there, they have their land and they have their benefits too. So the dealing be, should be according to that. We are not against anybody. But if I am talking to the Americans, it should be according to the benefit, the interest of the Kurdish people with them. And the same for the British, for, for, for Russia. And now if we are dealing with the Americans, I mean, if, if kind of alliance between the uh, Democratic Syrian forces and international alliance against Daesh, because we have one goal. For as the Kurdish people, we know those uh, brutals and ISIS, Daesh, is created or one or their aim is to finish the Kurdish people, to kill them, to massacre them. So we have def to defend ourselves. And they are, uh, we are sharing, I mean, we have a common uh, goal with the Americans when they want to, to fight against Daesh. So it's, it's very normal things to coordinate, I mean, uh, this efforts to fight against Daesh. And the same for the Russians. Well, we have Ahrar al-Sham, we have the Jabhat al-Nusra in, in Aleppo, around Aleppo. Well, they were attacking us before the attacking of the regime. We defended ourselves against them, and now uh, Russia is fighting against them. So uh, at least we should have kind of under, uh, understanding each other what we are fighting for. So this is the interest of our people, and they have their interests, and the relations is according to that. But nobody created us. We have created yeah. ourselves. Sure. Yeah. And if we're talking about interests of, of your people, maybe one of the silver linings in this horrific conflict in Syria is the de facto autonomy that you've been able to gain in, in northern Syria. Do you think you'll be able to retain that region as Kurdish at the end of the civil war? And what are the means by which you'll be able to do that? Well, <laughs> oh, uh, anyway, <laughs> it's very um, a long subject you are talking about. I mean, we are if you are talking about the region of Kurdish or retaining as a Kurdish or whatever it is, we have to think of the nation state. Uh, we think all the, um, uh, this amazing situation in the Middle East is coming from uh, a nation state which was imposed to, uh, to Middle East by uh, uh, the Britain and uh, France at the beginning of Sykes-Picot in 19, 1960. So they try to establish nation states for each state nation and they forget the Kurds. So it was a disaster for the Kurds. So this is coming. And those nation states, they don't recognize any being or any diversity in the society. They want <coughs> to assimilate the others or to kill them. And what happened? I mean, the Turkish state, which was a uh, nation state, they didn't accept the Armenians, they massacred them. One and a half million Armenians were killed and massacred in genocide, I mean, in 1915. And the same Sefo for the Syriacs, it's just because the nation states. So we cannot blame them, we blame the nation states. So this is, it was very big, uh, I mean, very uh, a bad experience for the Middle East, I mean, to fight each other to establish this nation state. 
And also Europe has suffered from the same problem before that. Well, can you tell me, I mean, uh, during the Napoleon days and so in the, in the 19th and 20th centuries, how many people they were killed since the French, French Revolution, which was the start of the nation states? We are talking about 300 million people were killed just to, to draw the borders between uh, this nation and that nation. I mean, this part of the land is belong to me or belong to you between the Germans and their neighbors, and between the France and their neighbors. And what happened? In the 1945, everybody said they are fighting for nothing. And they decided to be in uh, European Union. And now you can go to all Europe without borders. So uh, this border drawn by blood, and now they are removing by paying tens of billions of dollar, uh, euros, not pounds, euros. So. They are paying, uh, I mean, to remove uh, these borders now. So in the Middle East, I mean, as the Kurdish people, we were suffering from these nation states and everybody killed us, massacred. Maybe you know about uh, Amphal and Halabcha and the others, which is maybe hundreds of thousands of our people were killed as a result of these ideas. We are going to establish a nation state to massacre the others. It's not acceptable <coughs> because of that. The model we are proposing is a democracy between all the diversities. They can live together, which is a democratic nation states. In Syria, yes, we have Arabs, we have Syriacs, we have Kurds, we have Turkmen, we have Durzis, whatever we have. I mean, some of them, they are believed minorities. Some of them, they are ethnical minorities. Everybody can uh, live together. So the only way to live is democratic federalism for all the, the people. They can live in one state and together, equal to each other, they have the same rights. And this can be modeled for all the Middle East. So it's not Kurdish state, you see? So because of that, uh, I think our model is uh, completely different about uh, what the ordinary things, I mean the normal people think. So if I'm under understanding correctly, you're not looking for a sort of independent Kurdistan? No, 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 at all, no. Separating, do, do you think there's a legitimacy to Kurds that actually want that sort of independence, that want a Kurdish nation state? Well, at that time, politically, it's, uh, it's a little bit difficult, but when all the democracy, I mean, uh, over the Middle East is become reality, it will, at that time it will be very easy. Okay. Living with other people, yes. Great, thanks. Uh, I'd like to take some questions <coughs> from the audience. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions, it's the Oxford Union. Uh, and when the microphone comes to you, uh, please stand up and just speak into it <coughs> for the recording. So if we go to the gentleman in the first row there. Uh, I mean, I have two questions. Uh, one of them is about the Kurds not having their nation states. I mean, uh, don't you think, I'm, I'm a Kurd from Turkey, don't you think the Kurds, even the supporters of PKK, most of them are looking for nation states. Why, why PKK and PYD is imposing this non-nation state structure onto the Kurds when they're not agreeing with that? And, and at the same time, the Iraqi Kurdistan uh, is a nation state but the, with, the, with, with the respect with the minority rights. Why do you think that the nation state has to be an oppressive state? I mean, you can have a nation state with minority rights. Why do you think that when Arabs, Persians, and Turks have their own nation states, Kurds shouldn't have this one question, uh, maybe you want to answer, then I will ask the other one. Yeah, your second question. Uh, the other one is about the uh, Kurdish National Council in Syria and the Arbil Agreement. I mean, obviously, no, I ask about it, but um, I mean, it's very clear that uh, the Arbil Agreement is violated by PYD. Uh, they haven't followed. Uh, um, I mean, they establish a monopoly, to be clear. I agree with, the P, uh, with you that PYD is uh, pro-gender equality uh, and, and respectful to the minority rights. But when it comes to the Kurdish opposition and Kurds with a different, uh, with a different ideology, I, can see, I can't see any, any respect at all in the Rojava. And, and if, you would, if, if you would say that YPG is, is uh, representing all of the Kurds in the, in the region, uh, why YPG has a very pro, uh, a very upwest ideology. Uh, YPG I mean. or PYD? Sorry? You are talking about YPG or PYD? 
Yeah, I'm talking about YPG. I mean, the, the, there was a power share agreement in the Ar Arbel agreement, right? Yo, it was PYD. PYD, but like PYD and YPG ideologically similar. If if you're if you're sharing the well, if you're one sharing of them the is power, political, one of them is political and the other is military organization. So yeah, yeah, but but the military organization is the the copy of PYD. No, ideologically, yes, it is an apois organization. Well. Yeah, clearly I'll a police answer, yeah, organization. I'll, I'll right? answer the reality. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, but we we know that YPG is an a police organization. It doesn't have uh, the plurality that reflect the uh, uh, the the Western Kurdi people of the Western Kurdistan. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm I'm very. By the way, I'm really concerned. The the Kurdistan that uh, your party is envisioning is not giving me, a, won't, won't give me a democratic Kurdistan in the future. It will be a one-party monopoly. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, should I answer that? Yes, you can yeah. deal with other question first. Yeah. Uh, now, for the first question, I mean, why the Arabs, the Turks, and the others, they have their uh, one-nation states, and we don't have the Kurds? Well, what I was going to tell you, I mean, I explained, I mean, this was a reason for the massacres in the Middle East since the beginning of 20th century. And we were victims of it. Well, uh, Turkey uh, did solve the problems, I mean, with the one nation states? No. And it's going to be destroyed because they have destroyed the Armenians, they have destroyed the Syriacs, they have destroyed the Pont Pontus and Romans in order to establish, I mean, one nation state. And they fell till now it's not and well by that, by by doing right? by by doing yeah, this, sorry. Give me an example. Talk about the example of Iraqi So we have a future nation state. No, no. I'm talking Iraq now Kurdistan. about Turkey. About and Turkey. And it is successful, respectful. No, it's and not. It's, it's, it's not successful. No, no, no. Well, let me let me complete now. Well, what happened? I mean, even in Europe, I can give you the example. I mean, you are living in U UK. That's right. You have Welsh people. You have Scot Scottish people, and you have Irish people, and they were diversities, I mean different maybe, uh, in, in some means, I mean. When they became uh, a state, uh, I mean a uh, stable place which you can live and freedom, when they agreed, when they accept, they will became close to the democratic nations, I mean when they have their rights. In Iraq, when became a little bit, I mean, with uh, can live, it still is not stable. I mean, you have the war. It's between the Shias and the Sunnis. It's between the Kurds, the Turkmen, and the others. It will take a long time because the mentality is still thinking of, uh, you, I mean, uh, the one nation state. The Turkmen, they say, well, we'll, we'll establish, I mean, uh, our system in, in Tel Afar or in Kirkuk. The Kurdish people, they say, well, we will establish in Kurdistan. The Arab Sunnis, they say, well, too. And they are fighting for that reason. But instead of that, if you think of the Iraq constitution, everybody accepting, I mean, no difference between Shias, Sunnis, and uh, everybody is, uh, they have their rights, even from the uh, uh, belief side or from ethnical side, uh, uh, at that time there will be no problem. So we are not going to do the same. I mean, we, it's, it's not a right for the, the people, and you are, uh, I mean, lowering the, your level of, of demand. No, it's not like that. You have everything, but you want the others to be equal to you. In Syria, we are suffering the same. I mean, as the Kurdish people, we didn't have our language, we didn't have our school, we cannot teach our children the language, and so it's just because the Basis party, they went, uh, what they want is looking for is to establish Syria only for Arabs, Arabic state, Arabic nation. One nation state, it means Syria should be Arabs. What, what you are going to do with the Kurds? what you are going to do with the Syriacs, and Muslim, the Sunni Muslims, so what you are going to do with the Alawites, Durzis, and the result you can see now what's going in Syria. But if there was a democratic, a democratic system in Syria, as we are mentioning, or we are, what we are demanding, you wouldn't have this conflict, all this conflict. The same for Turkey, the same for Iraq. This is what we are saying, I mean. By establishing the state, you, you don't, I'm not talking about the rights. Maybe you have a right to do what you like. I mean, you are free to do, uh, to think what you are looking for. But what I am looking for now, 
Well, Syriacs in Mesopotamia, we are living the Kurdish people, Syriac people since 2,500 years. How they should live in Kurdistan now? <coughs> without their belief, without their church, without their culture? You are going to assimilate them? It's not acceptable. So this is, if you are talking about living together, it should be democratic nation. The Kurdish people, they should have the same rights the Syriacs they have. That we are uh, talking for. Uh, but the name is not important. You can't put any name you like. Why can't you have a nation state that is democratic there? You seem to be using a, no, no, no. There is be using a historical precedent. Nation, demo nation state is not democratic at all. You can't con think of the one nation state, democratic nation state, you cannot. So Otherwise, you have federalism in Germany, you have federalism in, uh, in Switzerland, you have federalism here. I mean, by giving the rights to the Welsh, to the Irish people, to the Scotland, and so you are giving them the rights. So the one nation state is... But is not we we are in a, a nation state here, and uh, maybe many years ago there were massacres, but we're... In a, as a society with problems, but ultimately there are not massacres. Are you saying that there is no way that you personally could head up a Kurdish nation state that wouldn't entail massacres of minorities, assuming it's democratic? Well, I don't understand no. why those two things are incompatible. Well, I think it's no, impossible. I mean, to have a democracy with one nation state is impossible. Okay. Um, and on the second question? The uh, second question was about KNC. Uh, well, yes. Uh, we are not talking about one party governing. Uh, now we have system, I mean since uh, 2011 system. We have Asaish, we have YPG, YPJ, which is uh, for, for everybody. I mean it's not PYD, it's not ideological organization. It's military to defend those people. And everybody is sharing in it. I mean all the, all the parties sharing, I mean if they have families and so. It doesn't belong to PYD. PYD is political, is ideological party. Yes, I am co-president of it. It's different. But if we are talking about the society, we should have institutions. Any state or any uh, system you have in the world, you should have uh, institutions. And we are talking about the institutions over there. And these agreements you have mentioned, I mean, in Hauler 1 and Hauler 2 and then Dohok 1, it was uh, put in the manner one, two, three, four steps, and then uh, eight steps, and then the, they were shared in this system. What happened? Uh, not PYD said. PYD, we are still after them. We are calling them to come and share in the system. But they are refusing the system. Well, the system, I mean, if you give, get a permit, just to get a permission to open your party, headquarters, or whatever, a permission, they don't apply because they consider, the, is, uh, con consider it as a recognition of the system. Because of that, they are refusing. And on, only two parties, which they are staying in Istanbul. Otherwise, we, we don't have objection, I mean, to any party to come, to establish, to work. And already I mentioned, we have parties, they are opposition. Some of them, they are joining, they are not joining. But everybody is sharing in the institutions which is, uh, belong to the system. Asaish, maybe you can find Arabs, you can find Syrians, you can find Kurds, and Kurds from everybody, they don't look. And even any members of PYD, if he wants to work in the Asaish, they stop their membership in PYD. It's never be, uh, be, can be a PYD working in the Asaish. And uh, some other positions also. So it's completely different, and it's a system for the society, it's different from the what PYD is doing. Let's, we need to take some more questions, maybe afterwards. Um, well, uh, sorry, yeah. just for you, the friend. You said I am Kurdish from the north. Yeah, yes? From the north, yeah. yeah. Why you don't go and visit there? Sorry? Why you don't go to Rojava and visit it? I, I'm inviting you to go to Rojava and visit it. Let's, uh, yeah. yeah, and with, with your, uh, some of your friends, if you like. Yeah, I'll come with you. We can talk yes, about that yes, after. Yes, please. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, more questions. <coughs> There's a hand right at the back over there. Uh, thank you for coming to speak to us. Uh, BGU Dojava, BGU Page. Um, there's been a lot of talk about political parties. Um, my question is, in a society that is in theory uh, founded around autonomous democratic councils at every level, what is the role of political parties? 
you know, why, what purpose do they fulfill? What is Are they the role of in what? Political parties. P political, um, parties political parties, sorry. Parties, so, yeah. You know, it's based on a system of democratic uh, communes feeding into each other, right? So what purpose do political parties play in that? Do they have representatives within each council at each level? Do they, uh, do they only operate uh, within Tevdem? What, what is the purpose and role of political parties within a direct democracy? Mm. Uh, well, I think the, the role of the political parties to uh, politize the society, I mean, to know what's going on, to, to tell them, to explain to them, to keep the society involved in the politics. Because we believe the politics is, uh, I mean, for everybody. Everybody should know wha what's going on in the country. And this is the, the role of the political parties. And when, uh, I mean, they, maybe they have different views, I mean, each party, but they are doing the same. Uh, maybe awareness of the people, politizing the people, explaining to them, organizing them in their party, in their organization, so everything is normal. And now we have two alliances. You, you mentioned Tevdem. Tevdem is, it means the democratic um, uh, society. society movement, which is, I think, about four parties, five parties became together, established uh, this one, because they have the same goals, I mean, uh, in uh, managing and society, and they have close to each other, so they became. And we have another one. <coughs> it's alliance, again, between uh, three parties or four, four parties, because their goal are the same. So you can make your alliances and so, and maybe uh, tomorrow if you have uh, elections and so, you can join the election, become, uh, it depends, I mean, uh, when the, the capital of the, uh, I mean, uh, the traders, is, uh, it's the money, but the, <coughs> the politicians' um, capital is the people who are supporting them. So you can make and come become, I mean, governing or uh, the, the, the place and the maybe managing whatever you, you, I mean, if your policies are uh, successful, you can uh, do what you like in that country. So the, politi the political parties is to awake the people and to organize them and to politize them, I mean, to teach them how to uh, practice the policies. Let's go to the woman on the end of the row there. Hi, I, I would wish to ask you this question in Turkish because I know you're more fluent in Turkish than English, but for the sake of the rest of the audience, I would proceed with English. Uh, you used to be a frequent visitor uh, uh, in Ankara and in Istanbul between 2013 and 15. And uh, your, uh, I mean, YPG militias had exor uh, escorted Turkish uh, military uh, to save this uh, Suleyman Shah tomb and bring it to Eshme, which uh, the uh, PKK imprisoned leader called the Eshme spirit. When did it exactly break with Turkey and with your forces? Yeah, I didn't uh, understand the first uh, regarding the English, what they said. <laughs> yeah, English is a bit of a problem, I don't know. Yes, my English is poor, I apologize for that because I maybe uh, I didn't learn it too much to, to make you, <laughs> or to explain everything in English. Uh, well, for the relation with the Turkey, of course, I mean, um, uh, as a Syria, we are neighbors, this is one. As the Kurdish people, as I mentioned, we have a big part of the Kurdistan is uh, in Turkey. So because of that, we are infor enforced to have a good relations. And we are looking, I mean, for the relation with the, the Turkish people. I mean, maybe the government can think in different ways, but for the Turkish people, uh, I mean, the Kurds, the Turks, the, uh, the other, uh, communities, uh, societies in Turkey, we look as uh, friends to them. I mean, we should, we are sharing the same faith in the, in the area. So we, we are keen to keep the relations. Uh, but the Turkish government is, uh, I think, is a kind of tradition of 
uh, maybe it came coming from the Ottoman Empire. Tricks, Ottoman tricks is very famous. I mean, <laughs> so the beginning they were uh, dealing with us tactically. I mean, trying to pull us to some sides uh, according to their policies. Because of that, you are right. Maybe I was in Turkey for many times. I met the uh, foreign ministry's people, the officials over there. And even uh, the during this removing of uh, Suleyman Shah, I was uh, there in Istanbul. When they finished the operation, I came back. It was a kind of guarantee, I mean, that it will be safe because I was in direct contact with our people in Kobani. Uh, that's right. And uh, of course, I mean, if we're not our people, because at that time they were Daesh in around the Suleyman Shah. And when they removed, our people were protecting uh, the Turkish soldiers who took the, uh, I mean, uh, the Suleiman Shah uh, remains to bring them to Turkey. Uh, the Turkish soldiers there, they were protected by YPG, you see? So when we are talking about this process, I mean, in, instead of fighting each other or to be enemy, we can protect each other. This is what we mean. I don't know, maybe PKK is uh, meaning something different. But from our side, we are neighbors, we can be together, we can be helpful. And Turkey didn't do it. And even uh, during the, the, the war in Kobani, I tell, told them, I mean the foreign ministries, why you don't open the way to bring our people? We have YPG members in Kamishlo, we have them in Afrin, we can bring them. It is around, it is the only way to, to reach them to Kobani is the Turkey. They said, yes, you are right, but they didn't do it anything. They didn't allow them. Because at that time, they were helping Daesh. We can see that. So it was a trick for us. So, and you see the result was going on. And now, just here, yesterday, there was uh, <laughs> arrest, <laughs> one arrest against me. So um, maybe they are uh, going more confused. And you're just looking at every code. I mean, there is a word between uh, some fascist uh, uh, ideas in Turkey, they say uh, the best Kurt is the dead Kurt. Dead Kurt is the best Kurt. So, uh, well, this is wrong. I think it should be uh, changed, I think. The best Kurt should live together. I mean, you can, uh, all the people should be the same, living together in democratic measurements in Turkey or Syria. Well, for this border between uh, Syria and Turkey, the both sides are the Kurdish people. We cannot harm it. And uh, during Daesh, maybe what happened, we don't know. But from uh, uh, after it, it controlled by the Kurdish forces and the Kurdish people, no one bullet thrown from our side to Turkey. Uh, because uh, the, we have our relatives in the other side. So this is the reality, I mean. And we would like to deal with the reality. For the record, I think your English is a lot better than some Americans who have spoken here. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, it's good. Yeah. There's a the guy standing up at the back. Thank you. Um, so, I understand that your fight ultimate goal is to create a state, a, Kurd, a, a real Kurdistan which encompasses the whole of the regions in which Kurds live. So I understand that it's, that's probable, that's likely in countries such as Syria and Iraq, which are not very centralized and in which um, autonomous uh, claims are in a way accepted or in any case for reasons of power relations they can be put in place but how do you expect Turkey to accept Kurdish autonomy and even uh, even less how, even more how do you accept, um, expect Turkey to expect uh, to accept uh, Kurdish independence on its soil <coughs> uh, well we Kurdish independence, uh, I think it's a tactical, uh, just they are uh, saying it's for north of Iraq, I mean for KRG, uh, not for the Kurds living in their land. And it's a tactical, just uh, they want to repeat what happened with the Cyprus. In 1974, they said, well, there is a, a Turkish society in Cyprus and they should have their independence and so. And since then, uh, the Cyprus was divided to two, Turkish part and uh, maybe the Greek part, and they are still divided. And this Turkish part is just recognized by Turkey, not more. So it's kind of uh, mandate by Turkey. 
it's, uh, it's not more. So what they are calling for independent Kurdistan in KRG, they are similar to the, uh, I mean, what happened in Cyprus, 1974. So what, this is what they're looking for. But for the autonomy, I mean, it's not, uh, it's the only democratic way to live the, to let the people live, live together. And now we are proposing this federalism, democratic federalism for Syria. And we believe it's the only way to keep Syria together with all these diversities. Uh, because you have Sunnis, you have Shias, you have Alawites, you have Durjis, you have Christians. Uh, they slaughtered, I mean, uh, those brutal especially, they slaughtered each other and so uh, you cannot make them live uh, till they believe, I mean, in different systems they have uh, their uh, full rights of democracy. This is from the belief wise and the others from the ethnically, I mean, the Kurds, now they are fighting <coughs> against Daesh, fighting against, and they liberated their lands in, since 2012 till now. Uh, they cannot go back to, the, to, to live in, in, in nation states, which is Arabic states. So the only way to keep the people together is to make everybody free for his, his faith. I mean, uh, democratic rights, nothing more. To accept to live, uh, to live in the same room with their wish, with their will, not enforced to live together. And we can see the examples. I mean, in all Europe, there are federalism in Germany, in in, in Switzerland, and in uh, maybe in in England, and uh, all the countries they have kind of federalism, and local authorities they have more authorizations, more decisions. They are free what to do. So why is prohibited in the Middle East? I, I could not understand. I mean, it's just because the mentality. Yes, the mentality, changing the mentality is, is difficult, but we have no other ways. We have to accept to live to er equally in the same rights. I mean, democratic rights. This is the only way. And the same for Turkey. Well, the Armenians, I mean, slaughtered. Why? One and a half million Armenians. And they are now... Uh, AKP is trying to, to continue, which uh, they, they, they were not able to do it in the beginning of the 20th century. They are trying to do it now. So it's not acceptable in 21st century. So that's what we are saying, I mean, calling for. The democracy living together. We have time for just a couple more questions. Uh, let's go to the gentleman with the glasses there. Going a little bit off topic with regards to political parties, in Aleppo, there's a, I know there's a presence of Kurds in certain neighborhoods, and right now they're sort of surrounded by uh, Syrian opposition and government troops. Has, uh, has the YPG been able to reach these Kurds living in Aleppo, or are they essentially cut off from Rojava? No. Uh, well, uh, in Aleppo we had the two neighborhoods, uh, which uh, they were mainly Kurdish. It was uh, Ashrafiya and Sheikh Maqsud, and there were some Kurds in the other places, uh, like Bustan Basha and others. Also, we had some Kurds. At the beginning of the conflict, uh, they could organize themselves, and they had some YPG units and uh, some uh, <coughs> artillery they ca could protect them themselves. And at th the beginning, I mean, during the liberation of Rojava, the attack started in the, by regime or by those groups, I mean from the beginning. And they protected themselves till now, uh, especially in Sheikh Maqsud, uh, and they defended themselves against the regime sometimes and against those, uh, bru uh, I mean those groups, especially uh, Jabhat al-Nusra sometimes. There is no Daesh in, over there, but there are other groups. They were still defending themselves now, and they became a key point, I mean, for these uh, plans to evacuate Aleppo. Uh, and recently there were some contacts with the United Nations uh, to allow, I mean, uh, the, the road called, uh, just passing by them, uh, called Castello, which is one side is uh, the Kurdish, uh, I mean, Sheikh Maqsud Kurds and so, and the other side, it was uh, before uh, those uh, groups, I mean, uh, Jabhat al-Nusra and the others, but now the regime forces are there uh, on the other side of the road. So uh, United Nations want to use this road, I mean, for evacuating 
uh, the East Aleppo, and now is dealing, but uh, they have, of course, there are a lot of casualties, a lot of destruction in the areas, but they are still there, I mean, especially now we can add to them a lot of people, I mean, from, uh, escaped from the uh, areas co uh, controlled by the regime or by the others, so they escaped from the Arabs and living in Sheikh Massoud with the Kurds together. They, so they accept living together and they are defending themselves. Uh, they are well organized, but of course they are in danger because they are far away a little bit from the main YPG units and the others, so they cannot help them very immediately if needed. Uh, but uh, they are still uh, resisting. I <laughs> mean, they are there, yes. Sheikh Maqsud, yes. Sorry. There yeah. are YPG presence in that area? Yes, yes, there is. But uh, local, I mean YPG, was tied to the YPG, which is main. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got time for one more question. Um, go under the light over there. Yeah, you're turning around. Hello. Um, what's your opinion on the way the Western media portrays the Rojavan project? It seems there's kind of exclusive focus on the fight against ISIS, but very little on the kind of uh, grassroots democracy, the, ideolo the ideological underpinning of democratic confederalism, its roots in Ojalan and Murray Bookchin. Do you think the radicalism of the Rojavan project is being diluted in the Western media? Mm. Well, uh yeah, uh, I mean, if we are talking about the democracy, we are talking about many kinds of democracies. Uh, but mainly the democracies, democracy, uh, democracy implanted in our area is grassroots democracy. Uh, by organizing the people from the bottom to the top, I mean, uh, the villages, the areas, uh, towns, and then become to the others and the, even the council on all the institutions related to the society is according to that. Of course, uh, keen uh, to have uh, a women quota in it. So it's 40% uh, for both genders, the equality between the men and women, I mean the organizations. And even for this um, grassroots democracy in the villages also, the women should be represented. So this is the way we are talking about, I mean, uh, mainly it's uh, uh, only, uh, I mean, uh, it's Mr. Ojalan's philosophy, uh, but I think it was benefited also from Bochkin or from the others, uh, maybe, but it's not purely, I mean, Bochkin's ideas. Also, Mr. Ojalan's f philosophy, it was a continuation about the, the Marxism, Leninism, Bochkin's and the others also. Uh, but we believe uh, this radical democracy is, is something maybe new, I mean, what we are practicing. So, especially from the uh, economical side, we are uh, trying, I mean, we have some uh, examples, I mean, we are trying to follow or to, to get benefit from them, especially in the Basque country, we have successful uh, experience for this economy, social economy, and so we are trying to get benefit from it, but it's, I think it's a little bit early to talk about this, but we are trying to uh, to implement the grassroots democracy. You are right. Yes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that's what we have time for. Please remain seated whilst our speaker leaves, but firstly, join me in thanking Salim Muslim Muhammad.